Hi all, Mr. Thomas here and welcome to Virtual Geography. Earthquakes are some of the most powerful natural events that can occur and the destructive potential of the largest of these earthquakes dwarfs any weapon that mankind has ever been able to create. And today we are going to be looking at one of the most destructive earthquakes that ever happened in today's case study. In geography, we use case studies to highlight a specific geographic feature, problem or process by looking at a particular place or event. And so with that said, in today's case study, we are going to be looking at the 2010 Haitian earthquake. So let's begin. Haiti is a country found in the Caribbean and it's neighboured to the east by the Dominican Republic. On all other sides, Haiti is surrounded by water. To the south and to the west is the Caribbean Sea and to the north is the Atlantic Ocean. Haiti's capital city is Port-au-Prince and is home to approximately one million people. During French occupation in the 1700s, Haiti was considered to be France's most productive and richest colony. However, 300 years later, Haiti is considered to be one of the most underdeveloped countries in the world and is the most underdeveloped country in the Northern Hemisphere. This underdevelopment stems from a whole variety of factors. These include government instability, educational opportunities being limited, poor quality of life, high unemployment and incredibly high vulnerability to natural disasters. Though things for Haiti took an even greater turn for the worse in the start of 2010. On January 12th, 2010, a magnitude 7 earthquake struck approximately 25 kilometers west of Port-au-Prince, resulting in widespread destruction and catastrophe. So let's look at the impacts of this earthquake. This means what happened as a result of the earthquake. We can separate impacts into a whole range of different categories. For example, primary impacts happen as a direct result of the earthquake itself, whereas secondary impacts happen as a result of the primary impacts. And then we have economic, environmental and social impacts, which are impacts that affect either money, the environment or people respectively. So I'm going to rattle off a whole bunch of different impacts now from the earthquake and it's up to you to decide are they primary or secondary impacts and are they environmental, economic or social impacts. So let's begin with the people affected. It is estimated that the earthquake affected 3 million people in total, including the deaths of 300,000 and the homelessness of 1.5 million. In fact, 250,000 residences were destroyed or damaged by the earthquake, and to make matters worse, several of Haiti's medical facilities were damaged or destroyed, including the largest referral hospital in the southeast of Haiti. Additionally, 30,000 commercial buildings were either destroyed or damaged, and much of the road infrastructure around Haiti was damaged and destroyed also. The damage or destruction of these roads caused severe delays in the rescue efforts provided by the international community. In the months that followed, Haiti was also hit by a cholera outbreak, and it was killing up to 50 Haitians per day. The true source of this cholera outbreak is still unknown today. It is speculated that it may have arose from the poor sanitary conditions that the refugees were living in, whilst others believe that international responders from various countries accidentally brought the bacteria with them. Regardless of what caused the outbreak, Haiti had to now deal with the aftermath of an earthquake and a cholera epidemic which was a disease that had not affected Haiti for over a century. So this leads on to the responses. Responses are the ways in which the impacts of the earthquake are addressed. These can be categorized into either immediate responses, which are responses that take place right after the initial event, or they can be categorized into long-term responses, which are responses that happen in the months and years following the natural hazard event. So while I talk about all the responses, see if you can categorise them into either immediate or long-term responses. Humanitarian aid was delivered by the international community in the days following, with many even launching fundraising campaigns to assist the country. The Dominican Republic was the first country to respond sending food, water and heavy machinery to assist in rescue efforts. 
Alongside this, the Dominican Republic opened all of their airports to allow the international community access into Haiti to support the response effort. Many countries sent medical aid, food and water alongside medical and rescue personnel. Despite this, six months after the initial earthquake, 98% of the rubble was yet to be cleared and thousands of bodies were yet to be recovered from the rubble and destroyed buildings. Relief camps were set up to assist the now homeless population. 1.6 million people were residing within these camps, and yet most of the camps had no sewage disposal, electricity, or running water, and the tents were beginning to fall apart. On top of this, crime was rampant within the camps, especially towards women and young girls. By 2012, two years after the initial earthquake, the United Nations put on record that of the $4.5 billion that were raised for Haiti by the international community, only 43% of it was actually delivered. And at this point, half a million Haitians were still homeless, living within the relief camps. And much of the money that was delivered to Haiti was spent on ad campaigns telling the Haitian population to wash their hands with soap and water, whilst many of them had access to no running water and no soap. In 2017, 2.5 million Haitians still required humanitarian aid. And on top of that, 55,000 people were still living in the makeshift camps, homeless as a result of the earthquake in 2010. So before I end this video, I have two questions for you all at home, just to get you thinking about the case study that we've just learned about. One, why might the Haitian people consider the earthquake response a complete failure? And two, why might the Haitian people consider the earthquake response a great success? So that is it for so that is it for today's video. As always, there is a worksheet and an answer sheet down in the description below. And with that said, it is time for you to pack up, subscribe to the channel, and I will see you in the next lesson. Dismissed. Staying behind after class, I see? Well, welcome to the bloopers and outtakes section. A section I add onto the end of all of my videos to show you that everyone makes mistakes. Learning is hard, and you'll find that from time to time you mess up, and that's completely okay. Without a bit of practice, you can't be perfect. So, to emphasise that point, here are all the funny times I messed up making this video for you today. So, sit back, relax, and enjoy the bloopers and outtakes. In geography, we use case studies to highlight a specific geograph... Uh, geogra... Geogra... Geographa. Okay, however, 300 years later, Haiti is considered one of the most underdeveloped countries in the world, and is considered the most underdeveloped country in the Northern Hemisphere. Hemisphere. Hemisphere! I did that one wrong. However, 300 years later, Haiti is considered to be one of the most underdeveloped countries in the world and is the most underdeveloped country in the Norman... Ah, Norman... in Norman's hemisphere.